It has been brought to my attention, and to that of several others, that your phone can say a lot about you without you saying anything at all. Can the look, model, color, price, and even data plan requirement that is associated with the phone allow people to paint a picture of how you talk, act, what you value, or even how you relate to the world? Can your cellular phone serve as a mirror of who you are or what you aspire to be? Let's see what some folks have to say. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. A rugged dies phone. I just think of an old person, like with the big buttons and stuff. That's what I think of rugged dies. Um, if I saw somebody with a rugged dies phone, like those waterproof phones, I would assume them to be like scuba divers or construction workers, maybe. Uh, so you, you don't really see that type of phone a lot. I hadn't even heard of that before, maybe because I don't hang with very many rugged people. <laughs> um, if I saw someone with it, they clearly go camping or something, and that's amazing. A flip phone? I think they're pretty cool sometimes. Um, they used to be the big thing, so I guess they were the hot shots back in the day, and then they sort of fell off of it. Probably they don't um, like to do stuff on the move, don't like to work on the go, but definitely they want to have access to a phone, they just want the basic access. I if I saw somebody with a flip phone, I guess I would uh, consider them to be not with the times, like old, old-fashioned phone, maybe like old people or people really don't use their phone much at all. Uh, so I guess it would be a lot cheaper and it's an easy way for, I guess, people to do it. It's not a big deal. It just was a phone. Um, so yeah, but you don't see very many of them around nowadays. It's just your basic phone. Um, texting's not that great on it, um, but it serves the purpose of um, making phone calls and receiving them. Younger people that don't want a data package um, or don't can't afford to pay extra thirty dollars a month. Um, they get the basic phones with the slide-out keyboards, and then your more high-tech people get your smartphones and your iPhones. The iPhone touch screens. I don't really like touch screens, so mm. I'm not sure what I think about those people. Um, but I guess it's easier to go on the internet and stuff with that. iPhone and BlackBerry. Those. Um, I mean, BlackBerry is kind of old school, I think, for a smartphone. And iPhone, it, it depends on the generation. It, it means different things. If it's newer, then I give them respect. Otherwise, <laughs> it's a little bit, I don't know, I like Androids, personally. They probably have newer phones um, frequently. Um, or they're, they may be a business person. But if like they're my age, then they're probably someone who like keeps up with new gadgets and stuff. Blackberry is probably someone that's really um, organized or someone that's really busy um, just because of all the um, the features that it comes with that allow you to do all sorts of business stuff. Um, you also have a lot of money so yay you with the money for the data plan. Congratulations. So I guess really the, the type of phone that somebody uses, you can actually depict what kind of person they are. Um, it's tiny, so I like that. And it's the blueberry. But yeah, this thing is it's pretty cool. It's got screens and it turns off and then a new screen comes on. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, I've got a calendar, so I got my Blackberry status covered, and it kind of looks like it, sort of, except for the dead giveaway right here, Samsung, not Blackberry, and I drop it all the time, and it's not busted yet, so it does its purpose. Um, like this $20 prepaid phone that I would still have now, like months later, because I didn't see the point of getting like an expensive phone since I obviously can't keep a hold of phones. Is it? It's like light and like cheap feeling because it's kind of like plasticky and the buttons are really loud so you can't really text in class. And it has a flashlight on top which is its only redeeming quality. I can't receive picture messages. 
Um, I receive text messages, yes. Oh, but the, the inbox is so limited that I have to like delete all of my text messages after like 50. Um, but it gets the job done. Yeah, I need to close up. I also can't hear very well on it. It, but I'm surviving. Okay, so <clears throat> the best part about this um, in terms of helping me run my life is that it gets backed up online. So my calendar is all over here, my tasks are over here, Google Docs, Dropbox, Evernote, that's very helpful. Then um, this thing that I call it my Creeper app because it just automatically finds pictures of everyone, which, even if I don't want to know it. And then news and um, and stocks and stuff instantaneously so that's pretty much what I want and I don't think I don't know how I do it do anything without that speaking of so this summer I was in a wedding so at the rehearsal dinner everybody everybody brought out like their phones just lay them out so people were playing like words with friends. I guess that's like a, a droid and thing. And they're like, oh, you want to play? I was like, I don't have that phone. Oh, you don't? No. Aw. There's no need to feel bad for me. Like, I'm perfectly okay with the phone I have. But like, how was your life before said phone? Oh, so you were still living? Okay. I got my team. Blackberry, Team iPhone, Team Droid, Team... I was like, wait, pause. Since when are we repping our phones? Like, Team Dumb Phone, hey. There you have it. It seems as though we do judge a book by its cover, or in this scenario, a phone by its case. And this idea inadvertently comes back to reflect how we view ourselves.